Renovating a vintage workshop type steam engine, part 9. And here you see the final arrangement for the exhaust system. In the end I went for a simpler option. It's really simple as this, it has a horizontal piece of brass tubing which is threaded and screws into a vertical piece of brass tubing. And this vertical piece of brass tubing in turn screws into the exhaust port of the cylinder. Quite simple really, but aligning the exhaust system was not simple. The length of the tube from the bottom of the cylinder has to be quite exact to align with the horizontal piece of tubing. I made a simple flange for the exhaust pipe, which is fastened to the pipe with some Loctite 603. Then I milled a couple of flat surfaces so I could use a spanner to screw the entire exhaust pipe into place. Here's a before and after of cleaning up the drain cocks. I didn't go over the top cleaning the drain cocks, just enough to get the basic grime off them. Here's one of the drain cocks fitted to the rear cylinder cover. This clip shows the assembly of the piston rod gland. I made three new studs by just machining some 2BA studding in the lathe, and the gunmetal part of the gland fits in one position only. This is very common with old steam engines. Refitting a ring piston to a cylinder is a very simple and easy job if you have a piston ring compressor. You can use a jubilee clip, but unfortunately my jubilee clip is far too small. I do not have one that will go around a 2 inch piston. With the gap at the top all you have to do is put gentle pressure to hold the piston against the end of the cylinder and use a piece of mahogany, not a metal tool, to just persuade the top parts to go in. It's very easy really. This is really good quality graphited yarn, far better than the stuff that you buy now. And I'm using a hammer to flatten it out slightly and then I wrap it round the piston rod. Carefully using a small screwdriver I persuade the graphited yarn to go into the gland itself. This can be a really fiddly job that drives you nuts on a small engine, but this is not such a small engine and as you've just seen, the quarter inch square piece of graphited yarn has been treated to a hammer to flatten it a little. It's still quite a tight fit, so I'm using a piece of scrap copper here to seat the graphited yarn down in the gland. Be very gentle with the hammer, no ultra violence is required at all. And once the graphited yarn has gone into the bottom of the gland, it's time to fit the cover. Again I'm using the piece of copper to just press the gland cover down and then it's time to fit the nuts. Do not over tighten the nuts, leave them initially quite slack. And once that's all done it's time to fit the drain cock to the front cylinder cover and fit the front cylinder cover to the cylinder. Before the cylinder can be finally bolted in place with all the ancillary pieces of equipment I need to fit the cylinder cladding. And finally when the cladding is fitted the cylinder can be put onto the bed plate and bolted in position. And the horizontal exhaust pipe, complete with the flange, can also be screwed into position. Always make sure that the piston rod is the correct way up for the taper pin. If you don't do this and it's upside down, when you tap the taper pin through the piston rod, it will not go through and the whole thing will be a mess. Now I'm moving the crosshead into position and fitting the taper pin. Make sure that the crosshead is fully at one end of the guide bars, not in the middle. You don't want to fracture anything or put any stress on the piston rod. Tap the taper pin into the hole. Gentle and carefully controlled use of the hammer is essential. If the hammer blow misses the cotter pin and smashes into the crosshead or the guide bars or any other part of the engine, that is definitely not good. Don't forget to oil the piston rod before moving the engine back and forth. A newly fitted gland may be a little tight and if the gland is too tight you can easily score the piston rod and you do not want to do this. I'm checking that everything runs freely and indeed it does so I can bolt the entire engine bed plate to the wooden base. This engine renovation is almost complete. Once I make the new steam chest cover it's a simple job to assemble everything and the engine will run. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.